Hey everyone, it's Trace Face back in my room here with my famous wallpaper. <laughs> Having a quarantined, uh, quarantined weekend here, right? That's what we're all experiencing. I've got wicked PMS. My face is breaking out. I was pretty bad last night and had some pizza. <laughs> so I'm feeling bloated, broken out. It's really, really hot. It's a hot day for Trace. Anyway, all right, so I, uh, I just got done uh, doing a group and one of the people in the group uh, suggested that I share some of this, these exercises with you guys today that we did. And I thought that's a great idea to try and help you guys right now cope with the toxic individual. Uh, <laughs> thanks, Teresa. <laughs> I'm s I don't even want to look at myself. I, I hate looking at myself in these things because you see all your flaws. So I'm just going to look um, up here. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, so she suggested that I share some of these um, activities that we did today, some of these little uh, exercises I gave them to do. Um, with all of you while you are uh, quarantine home with your abuser, with your narcissist, with your, uh, it, with the, you know, the, the, the devil himself, the devil herself. Okay, so um, let's, let's go through some things uh, that first of all, I want to, I want to talk about that uh, I'm pretty sure a lot of you are dealing with, uh, the people I'm working with are dealing with, so we need to bring these, these topics up. Um, the narcissist, you guys, as we know, is a child. Uh, they're a child that never grew up, and they uh, are, you're going to see, as I said before, you're going to see people's true character during this whole entire situation we're going through in the world. People's true character are really coming to the surface right now. So you're going to find uh, the narcissist in particular, um, realizes that you know it's not about them right now it's it's actually never you know it's it's not about them all the time but they uh they think it is and so um it's a it's a period of time that's a huge wake-up call for them because they're not out getting supply and they recognize that you know they're not they're not as unique as they believe that they are and uh so it's a big it's a big realization for the narc like oh geez you know so they're gonna do these things that I'm about to talk about. They're going to do them. And they uh, they don't care. These are the people that are out there right now. You guys that uh, are that don't give a uh, crap. They're going in and out of stores. They're not washing. They're coming back home to you. They're not washing their hands. They're not um, doing what they're supposed to be doing. They're meeting up with people. They don't give. They don't care. They're not going to. Listen, guys. They hate authority. They hate being told what to do. Okay? So they're not going to. They're not listening to any rules or regulations doing those things. All right? They're out there, you know, they're the ones that are, are uh, doing crazy things. Like stealing all the TP. Uh, you know, and, and just, just to do it. Just because, you know, they, they, they can. They're the ones out there, uh, like I said, coming home and bringing you the germs because they're not, they're not concerned with anybody else other than themselves. They're children. These are the people that are picking, they still pick their nose, okay? Um, some of them still wet their bed, guys. I mean, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> this is the reality. These, these, you know, we're dealing with, with grown boys and grown girls, so what you have to do, because this is going to make a lot of you out there nervous because you're living amongst these filthy little trolls in the house. And, um, and so it's going to make you nervous. And I, I, know, I know that feeling all too well when people just don't care and they're just, they're just out there doing what they want to do and, and just, you know, completely full on, uh, watching you squirm because they like that part about it too so this is what you guys are gonna <laughs> that's great martin i'm glad to see that i'm glad that you pick your nose all the time that's good that's good good for you um so 
one of the things that you guys are going to probably have to do, it's not that you really want to go around cleaning up after the narc, but if you want to make sure that you're helping your anxiety and your sanity, all right, um, you, you might want to make sure that you're the one disinfecting behind them, basically. Wherever they go, they're going in the cupboards, you know, eating their food, um, st stealing all the food that you just bought, you know, hurrying up and hoarding it um, so that you don't get any. So make sure you just, uh, you're disinfecting everything. Um, you want to make sure that you're increasing your immune system right now because a lot of you are under stress and stress, as we know, is a silent killer. So make sure you're increasing your vitamin C, taking some echinacea pills right now. Um, so this is all going to help you feel better about the situation that you're in, being stuck in a house with these people. Um, uh, you know, uh, echinacea. Uh, I, I once, there was, there was somebody one time I had met a few years back, and he was going on and on and on about black seed oil. And how that can kill anything in your body. I have some in here. I take it every day. Um, I haven't been sick in a really long time. So uh, I remembered that. I remembered that advice. And I went and got some uh, while well, this whole thing was happening. Um, um, what else? Vitamin C. Uh, uh, one, of my, one of the clients I'm working with right now who's become a friend. Uh, she told me to be drinking uh, hot water. Hot water with lemon, um, local honey, ginger, and Bragg's uh, vinegar, the all-natural vinegar. And drink that. You can drink that up to four times a day. This is great things to do to just help reset your immune system and make sure you're staying healthy. Probiotics, exactly. That's another one. I have those too. I, I bought a whole um, new uh, strain of them, and um, that's they're great to take to make sure you're staying healthy and getting rid of bad bacteria in your body. And um, things like that are going to, again, going to help to calm you down with your stress and anxiety being around these people. Uh, you might want to be, you know, sticking yourself in a different room right now because they're going to be aggravated. You're going to be aggravated. And it's going to be one whole aggravation uh, fest in the house. All right. There are things you can do. This is the time to, you know, maybe um, learn something, something that's going to benefit you. I'm hearing about people that are learning another language just on YouTube. Check out people's channels. Find things that interest you and learn something while, you know, you're going through this. Make this whole situation right now about you. Don't make it about the narc and what the narc is doing and not doing. Now, I know it's easier said than done, guys. Believe me. I've lived, um, I've lived, uh, you know, amongst these people and I know, I know exactly, uh, what they're all about and what they're capable, how, how they're capable of pushing your buttons. So this is the other thing I wanted to talk to you guys about tonight, today. The narcissist is scary because they push people to lengths that you've never been before in your life. All right, and so the, these are the times that things like this are, are going to happen and they're going to try and they, they, because they like that. They like to stand back and be like, see, do you see? You see what I, see what I've been saying about her? You see how angry she is? You see what she did? So don't allow it, guys. When you feel that anger coming on because they're texting so-and-so right in front of you or they're playing their little games and being a little child going around wipe, wiping their fecal matter around the, around the house whatever it is they that they they like to do all right so while they're doing all these things um they're 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 waiting for you to snap they want you to snap they they want that so you so you giving in to their to their behaviors is 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 exactly what they want they're asking for that's exactly what they're seeking you can't give in you can't. You have to show the narcissist that you're in control of your own emotions right now, okay? And they are not. So when you find yourself getting really, really aggravated, really upset, they're pushing your buttons, they're pushing your buttons, you look at them and you say, you know what? I'm not going to respond to this right now, okay? And you walk out of the room or you just say, you know, it, whatever, they're trying to get you in, in, in an argument. I, you know what? I need to calm down before I'm going to talk to you. you just go in the other room. Or you just don't say anything. You just look at them. You know, we talk about the gray rock technique, and it's 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 magical with these people, guys. 
It's magical. My favorite line that I used to use uh, with the ex narc was, let me, get, let me get the face going. I'm sorry you feel that way. And that's, that's what you just keep saying all the time. I'm sorry you feel that way. There's no emotion in my face. It's completely blank. All right? And they, they don't know. They don't know whether to crap or go blind. They don't know what. Try, try saying that to the narcissist. See what happens. <laughs> so those are, those are some techniques to do. Um, you know, if, you, if, you're, if you're around them and you're stuck in a house with them and you don't, you don't want to be right now, just, just keep telling them, no, 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 six feet away. Six feet away. <laughs> okay. Listen, I'm, uh, this whole thing has got me really worked up and, and, and worried. So you need to just make sure you're always staying six feet away from me. <laughs> okay. You can go with that right now, guys. Use it. Use it to your advantage. <laughs> All right. Um... I know, I know. It took me a long time too, Kendon, to figure all this out as well. It took me a long, long time. And this is coming from a place that I literally tried everything. Everything. I tried every avenue. I tried reverse, reverse, reverse psychology. <laughs> Nothing works with these people. Come on. You know, you just have to make sure the most important thing um, I want to make sure that I spe I. I I reiterate is you have to make sure that you're safe. You have got to make sure you're safe. If your emotions, you, you know, if you feel yourself at a place that you've never been before, you need to get yourself some help. And don't be afraid to, to make that phone call if you're feeling really depressed or really anxious or you're scared. Those things right then and there, you need to make sure you reach out and let someone know that you don't feel safe right now. And that is nothing to fool around about. And I, I, there's, there's nothing to, to take time with on, on, a, on that. You don't, you don't wait for things to change. If you feel unsafe, you need to make sure you get yourself to a place that you can feel safe, okay? Um, and these, all, these other tactics um, I'm using, no, that's, that's an a, a actual breakout I have, but thanks for bringing that up. <laughs> No, <laughs> you guys are, you guys have been making me laugh the last two days between uh, me thinking that people are, are, are saying things on the internet that aren't. And then today um, the, with these comments are great. We got a nose picker in the house. We got someone thinking that I have an infection in my, um, I have really bad skin, you guys. Um, so that's just something that I have to live with. I've lived with all my life. I have a very rare skin condition that no one's ever even heard of. I bet you, I bet you nobody on the channel has even heard of it. It's called ichthyosis vulgaris. <laughs> I'm very, very unique. <laughs> so uh, that's that's my story. I'm sticking to it. Um. So, okay, th this is some uh, exercises that we did. Um that we did this afternoon and uh, I felt like they will be helpful to some of you that right now are stuck in a house with your abuser. So um, you can do these whenever, whenever you come across this video, you can do these exercises and, um, and it's very, uh, it's just going to help to kind of sort of ease your mind and get yourself to a place where you can feel, um, you can feel a little bit better about what's going on. The first exercise I'm gonna suggest that you guys do is get some crayons out, get some markers, get some paint if you have it, whatever. I mean, I can't draw. I, I still um I draw the cat I draw a cat the same way I did when I was three. Um so so the cat um you know I just I can't draw faces, I can't draw people, but it's okay. This exercise is designed for you to just kind of take the take the colors and just picture the relationship, okay? And you just start to draw whatever first comes to mind. Now, some people draw just colors, array of colors, okay? 
or a pattern. Um, it's very interesting what people draw. So try that out. Try that out when you have some time. The other picture to draw is picture what total freedom looks like. And the first thing that comes to my mind, what does total freedom look like? So for again, some people they're just doing colors. Uh, some people uh, it's, it's about the colors. Some people it's about a picture and they draw the picture. So try that out while you're stuck quarantined with uh, a toxic individual or you're just trying to even heal right now from this. Um, Another little exercise I like I like to do in group, and I will uh, I'll have you guys all do this one too. The narcissist does not know who you are. Okay, the narcissist doesn't doesn't know who you are. So, what are three things about yourself that the narcissist doesn't even have a clue about? I'm sure, you guys could think of them right away, and if you want, you can share them right here on the live chat. Narcissist doesn't know who you are. What are three things um, that you you can think of right off the top of your head that the narcissist doesn't even have a clue about you? Um, yeah. Yep. Yep. Exactly, Martin. Um, and the other the other thing I'll ask you guys to jot down is uh, one behavior that you're actually happy that you did while you were with the narcissist or you currently are. One behavior you're really proud of that you did, okay? Can be a, the first thing that comes to mind. Um, okay, so those are the things I kind of wanted to share with you for, for uh, the group that I did today. Um, the other, <laughs> I have to share this, okay? I, I, I have to share this one. All right. So I, <laughs> I, um, I hope you don't mind. Cause I know you're probably watching. Um, but, but, and I don't mention names. I don't use names obviously, but, uh, one of the people I work with, um, I ask people to, um, to tell me the first word that comes to mind when they think of the narcissist in their life, the first word and <laughs> this person answered, <laughs> well, it's actually two. Shit stain. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I just got just, I am so overtired that really just caught me off guard. It's great. It's great. Yeah, mine was demon. Mine was definitely demon. Um, <laughs> although shit stain's a real good one. Uh, I always, I always want to make mention guys on um, that. You probably do want to, uh, if you're trying to get away from this person and, and you might be in the stage that you're trying to get away, it's a very good thing, it's a good habit to do is to, to give them a different name in your, in your phone. All right, uh, maybe one that they don't see if you're, you're living with them because you don't want to make trouble in the house, okay? But um, you, could, you could put in a name in there like, you know... Um, <laughs> You know, it, mine used to change every week what I would call it because it's not a person. This is not, these are not people, you guys. They're not people. All right. They got, they got dirty spirits inside of them. Um, unclean spirits. All right. Yeah, I had, I had that one too. Don't answer uh, before you blocked him. The abuser, I had that one. Yep. I had a few other choice ones too that I, I, I don't want to swear anymore on the channel. But, uh, <laughs> uh, although, you know, guys, I, I know it's such a bad habit, but sometimes swearing, sometimes swearing, I know it just, it makes you feel better. Doesn't it? Sometimes it just makes you feel better. Um, sometimes you get to that point. You just, you want to, you want to say a few swears. Um, but I do try, I try not to, I mean, yeah. There's a time and a place. There's an audience for for those things. Um, anyway, what do you guys have for questions in regards to this topic today or anything that you would care to ask that I could help you out with? Mm. Good, Heather. Good, good, good. Um, yeah, uh, thanks, guys. Um, I know I've tried everything under the sun. I don't think I've actually ever tried vinegar on my face. I have never tried that. 
Yeah, it's it's a it's an awful skin um, condition to have, and I've had it since I was a kid. Didn't realize I had it until I was probably in my twenties, and I was like, "Oh, that makes sense." Then, so basically, your skin does not exfoliate like regular normal people's skin, so you're left with a lot of clogged pores and dry skin all the time. The only time my skin is actually really nice. And I don't, you don't see this issue is when I'm getting some type of humidity, ocean water, and um, and the hot weather. The sun is really good for my skin. So I'm I'm actually living in the wrong area for for my skin condition, the exact wrong area for it. Um, and it always is worse right before you know that that wonderful time of the month. But um, yeah, i you know we all have our own flaws and things that uh we can't all be perfect you know we can't all be perfect like the narc <laughs> um anxiety for me is high due to he is home 24 7 i want a job was planning and now the virus i know i know that i know that you guys your anxiety is going to be elevated right now i know i know um Remember, remember to breathe, guys. Breathing techniques uh, really slow down the heart rate and help you to. Uh, people forget to breathe when they're they're anxious. People forget to do that, and um, and it really does help. The other thing I'm going to tell you, I'll share with you guys. I, you know, I'm all about sharing. Um, is uh, I I was when I was 14 years old. Um, I was diagnosed with anticipation anxiety disorder where you anticipate things that are going to happen that haven't even happened yet. And I used to have full on panic attacks. Okay. Looking back, I know exactly what it was. It's, you know, the devil comes in, you know, I just lost my grandfather who, who lived in this house. He, I was very close to him because I grew up across the street from my grandparents. So my grandparents practically raised my brother and I. Um, when my parents are at work, we were always here or with them. Um, so so I lost him in, the, in that year. My brother went to college and then I had my first heartbreak. So those three things happened within a month and I started to have these panic attacks. And I'm talking like, I'd be in class, I'd be in high school and I all I knew was I didn't know what was happening. I just knew like I'd get really dizzy and I would kind of go like, <gasps> and then I just would be like, I have to get out of here. I have to get out of this room. I, I, I have to get out of here. I can't, I'm going to die. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pass out. I'm going to faint. And then would come the sweats and would come, uh, I mean, this went on for a long time. They were testing me for everything under the sun. They thought that I had, a, they thought I had epilepsy. They thought I had uh, diabetes. They thought they, they tried all these things. So finally... <clears throat> we went to a psychologist and the psychologist um, or the psychiatrist uh, was like, what's hap What's going on in your life right now? And I didn't believe at that time. I was young. I didn't believe that <clears throat> mental can cause all these physical things happening with you. So uh, I still wanted to th think it was something really wrong, like neurologically or whatever. So I'll, I'll just share with you that I went to therapy. They put me on Zoloft. Okay, I was 14 years old on Zoloft. Zoloft had just come out, guys. Uh, and they finally, after many, many years, discovered that Zoloft makes teenagers suicidal. Well, I'll tell you right now, yes, it does. <laughs> yes, it does. I can't even tell you the crazy, crazy thoughts I was having on that stuff. That was too harsh for a 14-year-old's body. I mean, I must have weighed like 80-something pounds. I was really thin. So, uh, yeah, talk about demonic experiences I've had since I, I, can, re I can recall. Uh, this, was, this was one of them. But I'm just going to share with you guys that I came up, my, my cousin came over one day and she shared this, she gave me this book. And I wish, I wish to God, uh, I, I actually re reached out to her not long ago to ask her if she remembered what it was. She doesn't. This was a long time ago. We're talking 1995 or 96. Um, she shared this book with me, and this book saved my life. So the book basically talks about how to overcome anxiety and panic attacks and anxiety in general. And basically what you have to do 
is you have to talk your you have to talk to it okay anxiety here it comes you picture it it's like a it's like a stinking damn dark cloud coming around here it comes and now it's it's here here's anxiety and you want to just be like you know what in your head you say this to yourself i mean if you want to say it out loud um more power to you <laughs> hey i can do that right now I'm, I'm living you know here with my cats um but you want to say like hey I know exactly what you are, okay? And you're gonna pass, because you always do. And I'm gonna uh, tell you to go away, and you can go straight to hell, because you're not gonna bother me today, and you're not gonna bother me tomorrow, and you're not gonna bother me anymore, actually. And this is how you wanna talk to these waves of anxiety. You know what? You've controlled me for way too long, and you're not gonna control me any longer. I don't think so. You see, you can go right back to hell. I'm not, you know what? Okay, and then if you're still having the panic attacks and your heart's beating and you're still doing the same thing, you'd be just like, you know what? This is gonna pass. I'm fine. I will get through this. And that's what got me through them. Uh, it wasn't the counseling. It wasn't Zoloft. Uh, it was literally looking at this thing as it was something. And it is, guys. I'm gonna tell you right now, it is something. It's not psycho, I don't, I mean, you guys know how I feel about spirituality. And um, so, you know, so that's my story about anxiety. And I hope it helped somebody out there um, to just, you know, remember, you can talk yourself out of it. It's the same thing with the narcissist. You can talk yourself right out of the, the path they're trying to lead you down. The anger path, the jealousy path, the rage, the narcissistic rage. They got narcissistic rage and they want you to have narcissistic rage. Yeah, Barbara, music. Oh my gosh, yeah, music. Sometimes you want to listen to loud music. Go with how you feel. You're in a mood to listen to some some crazy <laughs> crazy music. Put it on. If you're in the mood to listen to something calming, put it on. I love listening to music, obviously. That's that's my thing. Uh, how do I handle her at work? I've been keeping it classy and barely talk to her. But I feel like she's trying to test me. She, because she's trying to talk to me. Um, I don't know if this is somebody that you're working with. I'd have to get more information from you. Um, but narcissists in the workplace, uh, yeah. When it's, when it's in the workplace, I mean, uh, I do have all the material to do the video series on the narcissists in the workplace. And, uh. I just didn't think that right now would be the best time because a lot of people aren't working, so it's kind of irrelevant. But, um, yeah, I mean, when you still have to work with these people in the workplace, it can it can really wreak havoc with you and make you feel... Um, it can make you feel in, like you're going insane and you don't know the tactics to use to get around these people. Uh, this is the, the basic rule of thumb I always try to keep in mind. With, narcissists are notorious for... Uh, trying to get people going, trying to play two, pit, pit people against each other in the office environment or at work or, uh, or, um, or getting you going or telling you to do things that, that, that is supposed to be their job. Um, oh, she's dating your narc. Okay. Well, um, so I won't even finish to tell you the, the uh, workplace stuff. We'll go into that another time. Um, she's dating your narcissist and she and you work with her. Oof. So it's probably two narcissists that got together right there. Um, uh, yeah. I mean, you just got to have some grounding techniques so that you don't find yourself getting really upset. And uh, because, you know, that's, that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to get you to, you know, to play. Play along to my games. You don't play. You don't play with these people, guys. Uh, I petitioned the narc who has deserted me in January and don't have the funds to go forward in the divorce. What can I do? Uh, that's another uh, question that I probably need to know more about. Um, like, if you're currently living with him... Uh, uh, or her... Um, if you're currently living with them right now, uh, yeah, I mean, 
right now you guys you got to be concerned with um oh there she's gone okay she's gone okay because i was going to say you need to be concerned right now with your own survival okay most of the survival that you need to be concerned with is right in here okay this place can be a very dangerous place if you don't take care of it um yeah i would not uh i would not engage in in what you're planning to do with her uh you know uh you she doesn't need to be in on any of the plans that you're going to be doing once you get a plan in place together um if you don't have the money right now to get the divorce that's okay at least you're safe and you're away from her which is really important to hear and i'm glad i'm happy for that um but you just you want to make sure you're keeping yourself in a mentally good place right now and knowing that there this too shall pass and you will get through this and you will there will be a time that you will be able to continue and um and and get this done uh because i know that feeling and how important it is to get it done um all right let me see here so guys um i want to thank you again uh for being a part of this <clears throat> with me today i hope i helped somebody out there with some of this information and um Again, if you are interested in coaching, you can email me at traceface_it at gmail.com. I'll go over my rates with you. And uh, uh, I'm, I'm going to be putting together groups coming up. So if you are interested in doing group as well, it's a little bit more affordable. And uh, I, can, I can go over those rates too if you're interested in doing any type of group work right now. If you have the, if you have the opportunity uh, to do it where, wherever you are, please let me know. Thanks again, guys. I hope you have a really great rest of uh, the weekend here. And um, I will talk and check in with you guys soon. Much love to you all. I'm Trace Face. It's time we all face the truth together.